and Rios, thank you for participating in this science festival. So what I want to, you, uh, to know is how uh, are you spending your quarantine in Texas? Well, like most people, um, I'm working from home as much as possible. Um, but I do have to go into uh, work sometimes uh, at the Johnson Space Center here in Houston, Texas. And that's whenever I have to work in mission control. Uh, part of my job is to work as Capcom, where we uh, uh, talk to the space, uh, to the International Space Station and the astronauts above there. Because, of course, the work on board the International Space Station continues. We currently have a uh, crew of three people up there. Uh, and hopefully on the 27th of May, a couple weeks from now, uh, we'll have the first launch from Florida with uh, the SpaceX Dragon capsule. This will be the first launch from Florida since 2011 when the uh, uh, space shuttle was retired. Um, so hopefully at the end of this month, we'll have two additional people on board the space station for a total of five. So I'm uh, spending some time at home working from home and, and some time working in mission control at the Johnson Space Center. And as an astronaut, is there any similarities between being in space and uh, being in quarantine in Earth, on Earth? Yeah, there are some, some similarities. When you're on board the space station, you're obviously confined. Um, you're separated from your family and friends. Uh, all communication is through uh, voice radio or the internet. Um, And what's even worse, you can't, you can't go outside. You're really confined inside the space station. You can't open the windows, get some fresh air. Um, so it's, it's a challenging environment uh, for sure. And what do you prefer? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's also incredible being in space. So I, I would prefer to be on board the International <laughs> Space Station for sure. The, the views are out of this world. It's just an incredible Uh, facility. Not only the work that we do up there um, is exciting and interesting, uh, but just being in space, being weightless, being able to float uh, is a lot of fun. And of course, in our free time, even though we don't have a lot of free time, in the free time that we do, uh, we can spend it uh, looking out of the windows, looking down at our uh, beautiful Earth. And which skills are uh, most important uh, that you have as an astronaut that could help uh, now uh, nowadays? I mean, you, you really have to be a, a jack of all trades as an astronaut, which means you have to be, you have to have a broad set of skills. You have to be able to do science, but you also have to be able to do uh, maintenance. You have to be able to be a plumber and an electrician, because mm -hmm. if anything breaks on board the space station, you have to fix it yourself. You can't uh, call anyone to, to come fix it for you. You also have to be a, a team player. Uh, typically, we're in, uh, up to six people on board the space station at a time. And so we work together as a, as a close team, helping each other, living together. Um, so there's a, a lot of social skills in, involved in that. And uh, did you realize uh, back in space, where, when you were uh, uh, in space, that uh, the fragility of human uh, life, um, this crisis brings new perspectives to the future of uh, humankind? Do you think? You, you certainly... Uh, What, what you realize when you see the, the, the Earth from space is how unique Earth is. I mean, there is nothing like Earth anywhere close to us. This is, you know, the Earth is our spaceship as we travel around the sun. Um, it's, you realize it's, uh, it, it's our lifeboat. We don't have a, 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 a plan B. We have to take care of the Earth uh, because this is all that we have. Um, you also, when you look at the Earth from space, you see um, this thin blue line that surrounds the Earth, which is our atmosphere. And maybe because the Earth seems so big when you see it from space and, and the, the, you know, the, the vastness of space surrounding us seems so big, this thin blue line uh, seems thin, very thin. And maybe because it seems so thin, it also seems fragile. And so you realize very quickly that, that you have to take care not only of uh, the Earth, but our atmosphere, because that's all that protects us and all other life on Earth from So the, the cold darkness of, of space. Yeah. Andreas, thank you very much for your time. I wish you all the best and see you someday at Portugal, yep. in Portugal. Okay? <laughs> I hope so. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>